Kara? Kara, Kara, you've been away many a day. Will you ever return? Um, what's with all the facing away from each other stuff? Let me guess, they'll be alienated, not connecting, yet making some connection. <laughs> Spot on. Yeah, but it looks daft. It's in the stage directions. Uh, can we just get on with it, please? Yeah, let's. All right. You are beautiful. Come back with me. This is not you. Where are you? She's behind you. Darren. <laughs> well, I'm joking. Sorry. An action. She was not herself, he said. She was someone else. That someone could be anyone. That someone could be her. Enter Botox. She competes for the space behind the mirror with Nat Real. Nat Real. Both. What? It's satire. I can think of better words for it than that. Look, can we just get on with the text, please? Got enough going on without any more pressure, all right? What pressure? You're not even getting married anymore. Yeah, our families are going to love that, aren't they? Never mind that. Look, the point is, you remain strong and you won't regret anything. Dead right. Make a decision, live with it. Let's do it. Jamil! Jamil looks shocked to see his brother and Lanika. Ray! Steve spotted Ray. Hold on! Wait! Why? You know why? Right, what do you want? How's your nana? I told you yesterday, or weren't you listening? Yeah. And then you were bigging yourself up, saying you could get us a gig at your club. And I tried. <laughs> Might have helped if you wanted to give him a load of lip, though. As he makes now, are you? He's just done me a few favours in the past, that's all. Just... Like I did you a favour getting you a trial as a DJ. And I did that because I thought you were brilliant. Yeah, yeah. But I did my best. She turns and sees him smiling at her, and she smiles back. Why did you come here? Well, I needed to make sure you turn up at the register office. Just trust me, yeah? Well, maybe he's right. Maybe we shouldn't have come. I, I know my brother, and, well, he's just a tiny bit stressed. Can you two stop talking about me like I'm not here? OK. Sorry. He doesn't want to marry her, but he's already married to her. I don't think Jamil knows what he wants. But they're really laying the law down. Oh, yeah, he's got a really tough life, hasn't he? He's got some fit bird who wants to shack up with him. Big deal. I suppose this is you taking it seriously. <laughs> right, you're being selfish now. Right. Don't, don't put your hands in your pockets, all right? Texas. Everything all right? Yeah. Well, it shouldn't it be? Look, we're going for lunch in a bit if you want to come. Yeah, it's OK. He's having lunch with us. Jamil? Yeah, um... Look, every, everything's fine. I'll, um... Uh, I'll catch up with you guys in a bit, OK? Jamil leaves with Lanika and his brother. So? I still think we should stay out of this? Yes, definitely. Well, I disagree. A couple of hours ago, he was looking for a cheap fly out of the country, and now we're standing back as he's forced into getting married. She's right. So, we're going to let this happen? I didn't want you to come in. Well, I suppose I was just concerned, oh, but... Come on, you've got to see it her way. I'm in limbo, Jamil. Us doing the religious ceremony means we're married in the eyes of our community, but we've had that registry office, but it stands for nothing. I'm married with no legal rights. What's your crew doing it? He's here to make sure Jamal turns up. He's not exactly going to drag him to the church, is he? It's the register office. Between them, her and her brother are going to ruin his life. Yeah, looks like it. I can't stand by and let this happen. Tex. Come on. Man or mouse, whose side are you on? Darren reluctantly follows Texas and Jem. Yeah. Excuse me, we're talking. We just wanted to know that everything was all right. Look, uh... We think you've got this all out of perspective. Really? Well, we just don't want you and your brother making Jamil do something he's not happy with. Uh, no, no, you, you guys are going wrong. This is, um, my brother, Rajad. There you go. And look after him. Well, eh? Well, I don't want to be rude, but this really isn't any of your business. 
Just leave us to it. Jamil. Look, guys, um, I'm gonna be fine. Why don't we find a quiet place? This is family business. As Jamil walks off with Rashad and Lanika, Jem turns to Darren. Well, thank goodness you were here to step up. Sinead to staff nurse Lindsay Nolan. Really interesting, that. Thanks. <laughs> Usually, everyone chats, but I'm good for you. <sighs> Tales of blood and guts in the AA keeps most school kids quiet for a bit. That one about the guy impaling himself in the railings. Yuck. <laughs> Your dad, sorry, that's a secret, isn't it? It's okay. He said we live near each other. Yeah? I live in one of the flats above the shops. All right. Um, this is it a bit like priest, yeah? In what way? Like confession. You can't see things said in private. Yeah, we have a confidentiality clause. So, uh, if you ever fancy a one-to-one -one chat about nursing as a career, pop in any time. Sorry. How's it going? Fine, I think. Yeah. It's really interesting. Good. Dad? Yes? Nothing. I've been looking online at this website and there's pages on what to do on forced marriage. Like what? There's an emergency number. But he must know about all this. Yeah, but maybe he's too scared of his family. There's no way he should get married. Hope you're saving for yourself. Give up. Mmm, juicy. I simply want what's best for Jamil. Yep, we all do. Fill the hemp plug if you want, but that's pretty clear. And unless you can get Jamil to cooperate, there won't be a lot any of us can do. I always thought students were supposed to be broad-minded. Yeah, well, you might have got the wrong idea from some stuff I said. I think this is a forced marriage, don't I? It's Mary made that bad. No, it's just... And why didn't you correct him? I don't know. They, they got all protected, started rallying around me. I, I didn't have to tell them the truth. My wife is on hold at the moment. You said you wanted to marry me. Excuse me. It's just typical of you. Mm -hmm. Hours before your wedding and you're wobbling. You just lay off me, yeah? You know what, maybe you should have studied drama instead of computers. With all your histronics. You're my brother. Look, I want to help you out, I do. But you need to put a little bit of effort in as well, yeah? And getting married. At my age. It's just ridiculous. Not if he's a nice girl. If I'd chosen it myself, then yeah. It might have been different. If you didn't bounce here, mate, you only had to tell mum and dad. Well, just like that, yeah? The first girl they found me, I didn't like. I told them, wasn't a problem. There was a girl in front of the heater. Oh, yeah, more than one. But mum and dad didn't put any pressure on me. They didn't force me to do anything, and there's no way they'd do it to you either. I just can't bear the thought of him being forced into this. Look, there's still time for him to be strong and stand against it. You saw his brother. It wasn't more likely time to give in. Wouldn't bother you if it got physical, would it? Oh. Look, one of these days, Darren, you're going to put someone else before yourself. Well, why are you having to go at me? Because I can feel the waves of wimp oozing from you. Look, it's not that I wouldn't fight. It's just I'm more of a lover than a fighter, darling. Jamil's still sitting with Rashad. It's all my fault, then, is it? I'm afraid so. And letting your mates think you've been forced into it, what's that all about? Look. No, not the smartest move, Jam. Bottom line is, Mum and Dad love you and they want you to be happy. Remember Dad gave you that big speech at your 18th birthday party? He said he wasn't going to carry you anymore. It was time you walked beside him as a man. I've been an idiot. Keep it there, all right? Marriage isn't being forced on you. You make a decision, you live with it. But whatever it is, it's your choice. Lanika returns. Beretta. Yeah, um, look. I brought this all on myself. I know I've embarrassed you, but I'm going to be there. I give you my word. It's just, I need a little bit of time on my own, all right? Two o'clock. Don't be late. Yeah. I won't. 
Jimmy on leaves. At last it's all sorted. No, I don't think so. Well, what do you mean? He gave us his word. He didn't shake my hand. So? Well, since we were kids, when we're mega serious about stuff, if we shake hands. So what do we do now, then? Don't worry. It'll work out. Steve. I love it. <laughs> yeah, well, I want to do a mix with this and uh, something classical, a bit Café John Moorish. Ah, uh, get you, Mark Ronson. <laughs> right, listen, I better go, cos you might need some stuff from the dry cleaners. Yeah. So, I'll see you around, then. Yeah. And, um. <laughs> thanks for the ice cream, yeah? So I will see you then. Yeah. I'll go. <laughs> I better get off. <laughs> um, yeah. Me too. Ray, if you're not doing anything and you fancy. I mean, there's no pressure, but if you do. If I do what? Well, if you've absolutely got nothing to do and you fancy me. Not me, you fancy me and you doing something at some time. Tonight it'll be good. Text me. <laughs> Sinead. Hi, Mum. I'm new at school. Free period and... couldn't concentrate. I think there's something wrong with them. I thought he was going back. I think he's got a temperature. He was supposed to go back. He might be ill, so call a doctor. Oh, um. Well, it's just the temperature. You and Finn had them, and I dealt with them, so... But he's a baby. It's not a problem. OK, I'd know if it was meningitis or something. That's why you should call a doctor. Oh. Just in case. Stop worrying. Come on. Come on, I'll get you better. Mum? Jamil walks along a college corridor and heads down some stairs. Lindsay's sitting at a table outside the Relish Burger Bar when Sinead rushes up to her. You OK? I need your help. Jamil's sitting in the SU bar, reading through the script for Lee's play. He tosses the script aside and sits down on the floor, cross-legged. <sighs> Breathing deeply, he begins to meditate. Sinead arrives home with Lindsay. Hey. Who's this? It's Lindsay. She's a nurse. What's the matter with him? Why is she here? For the baby, what else? Well, we don't need her. We're okay. He looks a bit hot. Have you done his temperature? Look, I've brought up two kids. Right, I can take care of this on my own. Look, I don't want to poke my nose in here, but Sinead's concerned. You seem a bit agitated. It's understandable if your baby's sick. I just don't want anything to happen to him. Let me have a look at him then. Lindsay examines the baby. Oh, he does have a bit of a temperature. Can I have a thermometer? Look, I can handle this. Mum, just let her do what she's going to do. I just don't need any help, OK? Come on. But he's not even yours. Just let her do something. Hmm. So is he your baby then? No. What have you done? I'm sorry. Look, I don't know what's going on here, but... Just tell her. Tell me what? Well... I mean, you... You can see how much you need someone. She stole him. She stole the baby. Hearing a noise coming from behind the SU bar, Camille gets up from the floor and walks over to investigate. Not finding anyone, he goes to a door to check more thoroughly behind the bar. He walks along the length of the bar but sees nothing unusual. 
When he turns around, however, he's surprised by two masked and hooded figures dressed entirely in black. He staggers back, trips over a crate and falls, knocking himself unconscious. Oh, my God.